Okay, we have Sister Charity Kris Kriska. <laughs> She's going. <laughs> you can. You're <laughs> And then Larry's after that. Good afternoon, everyone. You're next. <laughs> Good to be here. Hello, uh, First of all, I have to say thank you to Sandy, Don, and the Parks for Tea Party for allowing me this opportunity to speak to y'all. And I'd like to thank all the speakers that have just went before me. They were all inspirational. Thank you so much. Uh, before I get started, thank you. Uh, I just want to do a quick myth buster because I am a family rights advocate first and foremost. And a lot of people think that if you're a family rights advocate that means that uh, you're okay with people beating up on other people in family and domestic violence situations and nothing could be further from the truth. As a domestic violence survivor and a child abuse survivor, my personal opinion is, quite frankly, that if you have that much of an anger issue that you're smacking around on your spouse or your kids, you should be going to jail and getting some help. You should never be allowed to abuse others just because you're mad. So that's a myth that I hear a lot when I announce that I'm a family rights advocate and I wanted to clear that up first. I'd like to talk to you today about parental alienation. Uh, the definition, very simply, is parental alienation is when any person that has influence or control over a child uses actions and words to cause a child to disrespect a parent, with the main goal being a total destruction of the parent-child bond Oftentimes, the child is taught to hate one or both parents. An alienator that tells lies about abuse and then has the child lie about the abuse. This teaches the child that it is okay to lie about someone that you don't like and disrespect authority. When an alienator stops a child from seeing, talking to, or loving a parent or parents, they in effect steal the child from the parent. An alienator, when forced to allow contact with the child, will often encourage the child to make some display of loyalty to the alienator before he, she can go on a visit or have contact. Some of the most common displays are refusal to have contact with a parent, calling a parent by his or her first name, tantrums, destruction of property, physically attacking a parent or other family member during contact, physically harming themselves during contact, and running away. I am the founder of the Guardians of the Future Ministry, and we are a 100% volunteer-run ministry that is dedicated to the preservation of the American family and the, to the protection of our children. Because let's face it, if we save this country but there's no families left, it's really no point. Uh, what we do do is we offer free services to individuals that are thinking about divorce because, let's face it, people get divorced way too quickly instead of working on their problems. Uh, and we also help people that are struggling with child custody issues, have co-parenting issues, and that are dealing with false allegations or alienation. Uh, we also have a support group sign up. We're going to be beginning support groups for family members that are dealing with this very, very serious form of child abuse. It affects everyone from the, just not the children and the actual parents that's happening against. It also affects grandparents, siblings, and we want to try to give all the support we can to those folks because they should know they're not alone. We have seen a very serious uh, increase in suicide and suicidal thoughts of parents that are dealing with this type of thing and we want to kind of bring that down uh, and also I think it should be noted by y'all that your taxpayer dollars pay a lot for this kind of abuse to happen and I would think that would make a lot of you angry I know it does me uh, we do have two podcasts that I'm a part of and I, I do tea party announcements in fact one of them appears on the tea party homepage and that would be dude where's my justice that's every Thursday night at 7 and then every Saturday at 7 p.m., I do one called Weekly Reality Check. And we, that's where we expose government corruption and abuse of the citizens. And when the citizens are robbed of their constitutional rights by state agencies or government agencies, we try to expose that every chance we get because a lot of these people otherwise would not be given a voice. Most of the people I deal with have written to their legislatures and they get, if they're lucky, they get a pat on the head and sit on their merry way. No one seems to care that their life has been destroyed. And I find that very disturbing. Uh, a lot of the ways that your taxpayer dollars pay for this is when we have bad judges. When we have judges that don't listen to both sides of the story and they just make up their mind. G bad GALs or guardian at litems. Now, if a taxpayer dollars are paying for the guardian at litem, which is supposed to be a, an attorney for the child, seems to me that they shouldn't get paid unless they actually observe that child with both parents or in all the settings they're supposed to before they recommend something to the judge. Now, because if you, they're only observing at one, what, are they, what good are they really doing? 
I mean, it's, it, and it's really bad because the children suffer. Uh, and again, then we come down to something called Child Protective Services. Have any of y'all ever had a run in with them? Now, I'm all for protecting children from child abuse, okay? But when you have ch CPS workers that decide that you're an unfit parent because of your religious beliefs, because you are outspoken, or because you choose to homeschool your children, we have an issue. And they are funded by your money. Now, as a taxpayer, I think you find that extremely offensive. Yes. And I have worked with, thankfully, I have found some family-friendly politicians out there, one of them being Delegate Jonathan Miller. I've worked with him a lot. He is a sweetheart of man. He's come on our podcast. And he fights for, for parental rights. And I, I adore him for that. And I always, I'm, always in a, I'm always looking for more of them to, to call family-friendly and put them up on the ministry's wall of fame. Uh, I really would like to see uh, some things being helped with that because uh, I've even been personally attacked by CPS with false allegations because of the podcast in the ministry. They don't like me. I tell people, I still can't find anywhere where it says I'm legally obligated to help them persecute me. I can't find anywhere where it says I'm legally obligated to allow them on my property or into my home without a court order. And they get really mad when I say those things to um, think places like the podcast because there's a lot of people listening. And I'm encouraging them to exercise their rights because if you don't exercise them daily, you will surely lose them. Yes. So uh, things that you can do. Well, for one thing, you can demand that we defund CPS immediately. Yes. Defund these people. They are nothing but people that come in and destroy families. And for what? People from their own organization will tell you that the majority of the allegations they check into are 80% false. Well, that means we can reduce that workforce by 80% right now and save ourselves some money. Yes. This is ridiculous. I mean, they are, I, I compare them to, you know, like, um, let's see here, what were those called? The Nazis had them? Oh, the SS folks? The Gestapo, yep, that, that, the, that's our version of the Gestapo because they have the right to come in and steal your child. I have never seen anything like this. I actually have proof where I've seen them violating confidentiality of eight people in three counties. I have proof and I have sent this clear up to uh, the commissioner there because uh, Doug Miller helped me get it to him and nothing was done. They violated the, the, the confidentiality of eight people. Who wants, eight, who wants people knowing that eight people in three counties were visited by CPS? I wouldn't want people knowing that. I speak out. It's embarrassing for me, but I speak out about it because people need to know. If it could happen to me, honey, you're next. You are next. And I hate seeing this. And I have heard from around the nation because we are a national organization. I get phone calls from parents all over the nation distraught about their families being torn apart by this evil that we have in our society. And a lot of them, they, the CPS started picking on them once they started attending Tea Party rallies, once they started speaking out about their beliefs. You get too loud, they have to shut you down. And the best way you can shut any person down I can think of is if you steal their babies. I can't think of anything scarier. Can you? So things you can do to help. One thing you can do is get after your politicians and just tell them to stop it. You're not going to tolerate it. If you see CPS showing up at your neighbor's doorstep, you need to get your butt over there and be a witness for them. Because they lie. They will lie. Oh, and by the way, they also don't like veterans. Just uh, I figured some of y'all should know that. They think y'all violent. We've, we've actually had them use that. That, oh, they're too violent because they've been trained in combat. And I just think that's horrible, too. Also, uh, I wanted to let you all know that another way you could help is we do have a candlelight vigil. Three years ago, Governor Manchin signed a proclamation recognizing Parental Alienation Awareness Day. He called for us to stop this very, very serious form of child abuse and to educate others, which I got nailed for to. <laughs> I educated my, I made the mistake of educating my child and got me in trouble. But uh, there is candlelight vigil on, uh, to be held Friday, April 29th, 2011 from 6 to 8 p.m. on the south steps of the state capitol. Uh, it's, it's a free event open to the public. And we have information packets over here with all this good information for y'all, including the podcast. I welcome anyone to give me a call and let me know if you know of any kind of government corruption or abuse going on. We'd love to have you on the podcast. And it's as simple as a phone call. Let's expose this together. Let's call them on it. Let's call them out and not allow them to push us around. We pay them, we're the boss. Amen. Thank you very much.